Hello everyone and welcome to TRDU Plays Rakes Every Boss and Ninja Theories Adaptation of Devil May Cry from worse to slightly not worse. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, every boss in this is not a winner whatsoever. In fact, most of them are extremely easy. Like, dying is a challenge more so than the bosses. So, with that being said, let's just rank the boss from you suck ass to a eh, little bit of work you could have been better. Number one, Moondis. Moondis being the final boss of the game, you would expect something that could actually challenge you, which would force you to tap into everything you learned, every weapon you picked up throughout the game, and use that in order to gain some sort of advantage against the final boss. Well, I'm happy to tell you that Moondis is none of that shit whatsoever. This boss fight is super easy. All you have to do all you have to do is break Moondis' left and right arms, and then after doing that, you fight his head, and then once you beat that, you win. Now, this would really be a challenge if, you know, Moondis had a lot of crazy shit, but no, he's generic big-ass balls. All he can really do is slam his fist around, and then once those are gone, all he can then do is just throw little energy shots. Like, even in the footage you're watching now, once I started attacking the head to finish off the boss fight, look how much damage I'm doing with Ebony and Ivory. You tell me, should I really be worried about this guy fucking me up anytime soon? My pistols, which you get at the beginning of the game, mind you, are doing this type of damage to him. Yeah, I'm not exactly too worried about Moon is fucking me up. Number two, the Hunter Demon. You know, in the beginning of the game, Cat, you know, the third protagonist who's not Dante nor Virgil, brings up the fact that there's numerous Hunter Demons hunting Dante. Well, where the fuck are they at? Because this is the only one I see, and the, if he's supposed to represent all the Hunter Demons? Bit disappointing. You guys should find another job of work that isn't fucking mercenary. So yeah, the Hunter Demon. What does he have? Well, um, let's start off with this. He decides in his first phase to fight against the son of Sparta, nonetheless, with a hunter knife. That'd be like me going up to age of 47 with a steel baton. What the fuck did you really think that was gonna do for you in the longevity of this fight? But okay, fine, he decides to use his little hunter knife thinking he's doing good damage when honestly you could parry it just by swinging at your blade at the right time or if you're like me, you just go gung-ho and say fuck it and just smash your sword against the fucking vagina in his face. So yeah, eventually phase 2 will eventually happen in which this motherfucker who had to brush the teeth since God knows what spews dark fog out of his damn mouth in order to try to hide himself while also boomeranging his knife around the field which you can dodge by pressing the L1 button in any direction, and if even that's challenging for you, you can also shoot the knife to slow it down, so that way Dante has even more ample time to dodge it. But let's talk about his third phase then, right? Because that's got to be better. His third phase, he climbs up on the top of a roller coaster and then tries to shoot you with a grapple hook gun, but you shoot back, drop him, and then kill him because he thinks that most ample time to do that is when he has the lowest amount of health possible. Number three, the Succubus. Look, there's two bosses on this list that are disgusting as shit to me, and the Succubus is the first one. The Succubus, being this large ass phallic looking thing with a foul ass mouth which hurls out exp which hurls out fucking curse words, the, the speed at which Jotaro's stand fucking star platinum punches, which means very fucking fast, is also not that challenging. Look, let's just keep it real here. The boss fight starts off disgusting with the succubus spitting up on the battlefield that Dante is on, forcing you to have to using, forcing you to use the angelic grappling hook. I don't even know what the fuck the name of the half these weapons are, so yeah, using the angelic grappling hook in order to pull yourself onto a new platform in which the real fight begins. So yeah, what do you do in this fight? You hack and slash at the succubus, and then after a while, once it loses one of its health bars. You then use the demonic grappling hook to pull down one of the support beams holding it up. After the fully defeating the beast, you pull down all of the support beams and drop it into the pit of throw up that it hangs over. Now, that would be poetic justice. This is a disgusting ass monster which has been finished off by the disgusting ass vial of shit that it puts on the floor underneath it. However, because this motherfucker refuses to die, Instead, you get a, no, a whole nother part to it in which this motherfucker now is like, oh hey, how about I just go out of my way and try to drag you into this vile shit with me? In which then, the main part of this boss fight is just knocking it around and forcing it into a giant ass bladed fan 
to basically sh chop it up. Or, or since it always looks like a phallic object, we can just say that this is just circumcision? Number four, Mundus Spawn. This shit disgusts me on a level that shouldn't be possible. This is a boss fight I have to get up close and personal with, but every time I get, get but every time you get near me, it's like, how the fuck do you reabort a child that's halfway born and somehow can do half the shit it does? Honestly, this boss fight isn't difficult, but it's just gross the entire time. The beginning of the fate, the beginning. The fight is two-part. On one hand, you're fighting the fetus, if you can even call it that. And on the other hand, you're also fighting the mother. So, here's how this fight goes. You start off by fighting the fetus until its health bar drops by one. And then, you have to use the demonic grappling hook to pull the mother out to domestically abuse that bitch. Until, eventually, she has enough of it and decides to hide behind her child again only for you to repeat the cycle again until both the fetus and the mother are dead. So obviously the fetus is the biggest problem in this fight, but can you really call it that? I've only seen this thing do two attacks, one in which it threw a disco ball at me and the other in which it somehow created sound waves to push me back. And other than that, there's not really much else to talk about here. I mean, it's disgusting to look at, trust me. I had to look at this shit twice because I had to go back and re-record all of these bosses after beating the game within a five hour limit, but I, I don't know. It's just something about looking at this deformed fuck that makes me go, oh, okay, so um, I really want to know how to become an abortion doctor so I can prevent shit like this from ever being born. Number five, Virgil. After defeating Mundus and the world being primed for just, you know, exploitation, Virgil's the first person to think, you know what, I wonder if I'll, I wonder if I say I'm going to roll that shit, I wonder if Dante will be okay with it. Which, of course, if you know Devil May Cry history, uh, Dante ain't too keen on that whole letting my brother rule shit. So, these two end up getting into a fight. Let me tell you something right now. This Virgil ain't no DMC4 Virgil, and he damn sure ain't no Devil May Cry 5 Virgil. Let's get that out of the way, even though I can see different mechanics from this game being implemented in Devil May Cry 5. So, uh, eh, pick your poison on that one. This, this fight, up for the majority of it, you're just bullying Virgil. After every few bits of health, he ends up losing a small minor cutscene ends up playing between Dante and Virgil, and honestly, it just more so interrupts the flow of battle for anything. But the one thing that Virgil has on the side is that he can block and counter your moves, and I say counter in the loosest base possible, as you can see on screen. He'll counter your move, and then, he'll, not counter, he'll block your move, and then try to perform a counter, but if you don't have the speed of a fucking sloth stuck in molasses, you can actually go out of your way and just dodge everything he throws your way, and then bully him again and just repeat the cycle. However, the boss fight takes an unexpected turn when Virgil himself unleashes his Devil Trigger, that being his Double Ganger ability, which creates a clone of himself which can either copy his moves or perform its own task thanks to Virgil's own will. This part can become a challenge, however, if you decide to, however, it depends on how you play him. If you decide to just attack Virgil, you know, the real Virgil, you're going to get your ass handed to you by the goddamn double ganger. However, if you decide to attack the double ganger, sure, you may not be able to destroy it, but it's a good source of building up that DT gauge, which you can then use to activate double trigger for bonus armors and attack power. And trust me, this fight, I'm making it seem like the final phase sounds difficult, but it sure ain't difficult. And just to prove it, I went out of my way to beat this fight without using double trigger because... Let's be honest here, Devil Trigger is more so of a crutch for me than anything else. And I mean that in the way as if someone using a crutch despite the fact neither of their legs are broken and they work fucking fantastically. And last but certainly not least, the quote unquote hardest boss in the game is Bob Barbison himself. I think that's his name. I can't remember. I know his name is Bob. Bob is a newscaster, which means he's going to use the media to attack you in every fucking way possible. This boss fight is actually interesting because this is the only boss fight that's killed me twice. 
No bullshit. He killed me the first time when I originally ran through this game, and then he killed me again when I had to re-record this for this video. So, I guess we can say that makes him the hardest boss in the game, I guess? I don't know. Like I said, a lot of these bosses ain't winners. It's more so just you don't suck ass as much as the ones lower on this list. Bob has a wide variety of attacks, but his boss fight pretty much works like this. There are either one or numerous panels on the field that you have to use your newly acquired fire flaming hammer fist, because like I said, don't know the name of half these fucking abilities, in order to shut him off. However, Barb's going to throw everything his way in order to ensure that he stops you from doing so. Things like specific barriers which do damage to you if you don't go through the right parts, um, lasers that can fuck... I could just eviscerate Dante's health, lasers that close Dante in and could collapse on themselves at any point in time, forcing you to be strategical and knowing when to jump. Like being like being strategical has anything to do with jumping, but okay. But other than that, Bob I think what really got me killed in this fight wasn't even more so the fact that Bob was difficult. It's just the onslaught of shit he throws at you combined with what you have to do to open them up for damage. And trust me, like I said, Bob ain't exactly no great boss. He's all right. He does, he still takes a reasonable damage. And around this point in time, you have Devil Trigger. So you could do a fuck ton amount of damage to him. But when you combine all the things that I just brought up earlier, alongside with the fact that you're actually also actively trying to do an objective, it can overwhelm you at times as to what the fuck is going on on the screen. But, once again, he only killed me twice out of the, what, two times I had to fight him? So, yeah, he ain't too difficult. Anyways, I'm going to end this video here. If you guys did enjoy this boss ranking that was not scripted in any fucking way possible, you go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and maybe I'll consider doing more of these in the future. I only really did this because, it, like I said, it only took me five hours to beat this game, and with the six bosses that was on here, I'm highly disappointed. Really highly disappointed. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and head out. Peace out.